Council meeting of the City of Twinsburg to order. Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Scafidi? Here. Mrs. Walker? Present. Mr. Bellin? Here. Mrs. Stoffer? Here. Mr. Fury? Here. Mr. Barr? I'm Greg. Mr. Barr's not here. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we will have the uh, invocation and pledge of allegiance led by Mr. Bellin. Father, we seek your guidance for the business that is before us. In planning for the future of the city of Twinsburg, give us vision. Guide us to make decisions that are not self-serving, but for the betterment of our community, so that we can continue to move in a positive direction. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next item on the agenda is the election of the vice president with the um, uh, with our former council colleague, Joanne McFerrin, leaving. That left me the opportunity. I was the vice president of the council, so I'm now the president of the council, and we have a vacant position as the vice president. So at this time, I would like to nominate uh, Bill Fury as vice president of city council, and then I will call for any other nominations. A second. A second. Anybody have any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, Shannon, would you call the roll? Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have the approval of minutes from the regular council meeting on June 8th. Anybody have any? Is there any discussion? Uh, make a motion that the uh, regular council meeting minutes from June 8th are approved as submitted. Okay. And is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Okay. Um, awards and presentations, I don't believe there are any. Um, audience participation? Yes. First, we have Bob Thews. Good evening, Council. Bob Thews, 2229 Demi Drive in the Meadowood Plan. Uh, at the last uh, meeting, Mr. Finch spoke about the, how the comprehensive plan team had four meetings and were planning a fun event because they had worked so hard. Uh, years ago, I, I was asked to work on a comprehensive plan for a township in Pennsylvania. I accepted that challenge and ended up working with the team for the next two years, meeting almost weekly to redo, redo the comprehensive plan. But the very first thing we did was conduct public meetings at different locations around the community asking the residents how should we develop this community. We sought the input of the people who lived in the community. That was the very first step and became the mantra driving the comprehensive plan. We had an expert in zoning and planning on the team and we all learned how about all the state requirements but we plotted on the team are plotted through the legal portion, keeping the citizens' ideas in mind. After we finished, we had well over 90 residents show up for a, a final product. Some were pleased, some expressed uh, concern, but they all had the opportunity for input. Twinsburg is working on their comprehensive plan and the CIC has its own vision of the downtown areas, both items important to the residents. How many meetings have been conducted seeking input of the residents? How many meetings have gone out into the public to seek the residents' advice? None. And you wonder why there was a distrust of future plans for the city. You know, right prior to the old school being destroyed, there was plenty of suggestions on how to use that building on social media, but not in a public meeting. No attention paid by city leadership but the councilman at large was able to research old quotes on the CIC 
on social media for the purpose of insulting the residents. Here's the problem. You, as an administration, seek zero input from the citizens. No meetings on the comprehensive plan or CIC Yates Finch plan, no ward meetings. You act like we are stupid, and you wonder why there's, quote, misinformation on the social media. You could care less about our input, and the apathy of the public towards these meetings shows you this. We had over 90 people at a, town, a, a township public meeting that is one third the size of the city because the public, they involve the public. You have bumpkiss because you don't want public involvement. And please don't compare the Ohio Sunshine Law requirements to public meeting that you comply with and truly seeking public input. These meetings, with their restrictions on speaking, are a joke and an affront to a normal system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next um, we. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Next we have Chuck Bonacci. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Walker, Shannon, Sarah, Chuck Bonacci, 11327. In the Heritage Drive in the beautiful city of Twinsburg, Ohio. Come before you tonight to give an update from the Environmental Commission. Uh, recently, we had a shredding event. Uh, 5,000 pounds of material was collected, shredded, and off to the recycler. The beauty of that is uh, it helps protect people's identity and it helps get things back into being reused. Now, 5,000 pounds, it's a little bit less than usual, but I think what happened is there's a couple things. Folks are transitioning to online banking, so there's fewer and fewer statements. And then there was also less things that don't need to be shredded, dropped off. I stood and worked with the service department. Chris and his guys are excellent. They unloaded the cars, got it into the bins, into the shredder, made an excellent uh, day. Then we had uh, other environmental commissioners there helping as well, passing out information for summit soil and water. Great, great event. The residents listened. But unfortunately, not everyone's available the day we do an event. So I want to alert council and the community that Summit Reworks is hosting a shredding event with recycling in Macedonia on July 10th from 9 a.m. to noon at Longwood Park. Now, other great things the city's done around an environmental aspect. I look up and I see these new light fixtures. These are LED fixtures. As the city goes through and renovates and improves things, they put in energy efficient fixtures. That's a step in the right direction. Our police cruisers, hybrid cruisers, innovative, saving thousands of gallons of gas. Dollars is the driver on one side, but fuels the driver on the environmental side. Then you have uh, something that we had conversations about four years ago. A gentleman came to our environmental commission, he came to this council, he talked about electric vehicles and the importance of charging stations. So now we have a charging station outside this building, over by the swimming pool, by the town square, and at the golf course. So we're connected with that stuff, and that has spurred on the gas station on the one corner that's going to get knocked down and add six charging stations that can do 12 cars. This town, when I moved here in 1980-something, was known for the gas stations. Now we're going to be known for the charging stations. And as the big automakers go electric, it's going to be, make Twinsburg a destination and drive folks to us, literally drive folks to us. Recycling and refuse collection. Sam, last meeting you talked about challenges with waste management. The residents need to know that there's good stuff to recycle and stuff that can't go in the recycle bin. And if we contaminate what should go in the recycle bin and it gets in that truck and too much of that material gets in the truck, that all ends up at the landfill. The city's paying for recycling. We should be using it. Let's follow the rules. They're posted on the city's website. Waste management has the same rules posted on their website. If it's not to be recycled, put it in the bin with the green lid. Let's get the right material to the right place so we have a better planet. Household hazardous waste. When I did the computer uh, e-waste, and again at the document shredding, folks were asking about household hazardous waste. The nearest household hazardous waste collection is in uh, Stowe on Graham Road. Now right now it's a little chaotic getting there because of the construction, <laughs> but they're open from two to seven on Thursdays. And they'll take your oil-based paints, your solvents, your extra landscape and weed killers, uh, mercury thermometers, batteries, all the stuff that shouldn't go into a landfill, they'll take there and process it the right way and probably get it uh, 
separated and recycled off and stop contaminating the landfills to make our make our city and the world a little bit better. So that's my report from an environmental standpoint. Uh, keep up the good work. Thanks for allowing us to do the shredding event. Thanks for allowing us to do the computer event. And thanks for uh, you know listening tonight. Chuck, I have one question. The um, the shred day in Macedonia mm -hmm. is that open for just Macedonia residents no. or for everybody? Because it's sponsored by Summit Reworks. It's a county wide. So if you're a county resident, so our residents, our residents well. could go there. Okay. So it, it's ours was uh, a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and theirs is. Uh, there's this coming up, or that event's coming up. Summit Reworks does shredding throughout Summit County. That's the nearest one. They're also in Fairlawn, they're in Green. So this is the nearest one that Reworks does to us. And it's nice that it's coming. I wish it was a little bit more of a time frame from ours. But uh, you know, they're free events. You could go to other places, have stuff shredded, they're gonna charge you. So this uh, Reworks event and the one we had are, are great uh, values for the residents. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you, thank, thank you, Chuck. <coughs> and next we have Bruce Baldwin. Good evening, Council Bruce Baldwin, 3310 Cannon Road, Twinsburg, Ohio. Uh, the first thing, Tinker's Creek uh, Bridge at Route 82 and Route 14 Cannon Road, as I mentioned a year and a half ago, is without a doubt getting worse, and also known as a bridge header. I really believe that somebody's going to knock a tie right under something. I mean, it is, it's not good at all. And these newer cars just don't. Second, uh, the building behind the PNC Bank at uh, Route 82, no name on the building, west and south side of building, stone facing has been falling off on the ground since February of 2021. Also, building is just north of Giant Eagle parking lot. The, uh, this, this, it's actually it's falling on the ground. It, it's been doing, I just happened, I don't go around and look at this stuff, believe it or not. But I happen to know by going to Giant Eagle, I did see that. I wasn't going through the dumpster either, it's probably what you're thinking. Anyway, <laughs> any more news on what the uh, CIC is doing in the taxpayers' money, such as uh, land between McDonald's and Church Street? Don't seem like much is going on. I'll respond to you when you Oh, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you. Be safe, take care of yourself, and each other, and have a good night. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Baldwin. Thank you. There is no more. There is no more. Okay. Anybody on council wishing to respond to any of the residents? Mr. Baldwin, you might want to hang on. <laughs> so, Mr. Baldwin, the property that was those two lots that, uh, uh, you, you find you, the two lots that are uh, uh, adjacent to the driveway of the University Hospital, the CIC purchased those so that, so that uh, we wouldn't end up looking somewhat like Macedonia. And that just fast food stores, tire stores, you know, uh, just retail. There was there were some, some businesses that were going to go there. We want to be able to control that intersection in case we want to go through and connect it to the back section. We did not want to have that uh, that intersection uh, blocked with or, or have additional traffic in and out right there. Uh, so. We worked with uh, Tom Lane, with the, with the, uh, the person that owned those properties. We worked out a, an agreement to buy them, and uh, we're, we're going to just sit on them at this point. Both of the houses were pretty much, uh, well, I think the fire department burned both down. They were, they were not uh, sellable, uh, and the lots are, are maintained uh, by the CSC. So there was very limited property tax, if any, coming out of those properties. So. But the, the whole, what the purpose is, is to control what happens on that intersection. We did not want a, a, a paint store and a tire store directly across from the entrance to a bank, a kidney, uh, kidney uh, dialysis program, as well as a, uh, a, an urgent care emergency room. And that's what's going on with that. Well, kind of the main thing I was wondering, I always feel like when I see houses are paying tax to the city, but now there's nothing you know, they weren't paying taxes somehow. I mean, they weren't just that bad. They were not. They were not able to be sold for uh, to have them be uh, occupied again. Uh, in fact, we used them for police and fire practices, uh, and the fire department burned it down and we cleared the site, and the CIC was charged for it. There's no idea when they're going to develop that. that Mr. Sort of I can't have any dialogue back and forth. He answered your question. I'm sorry. Okay. No. I'm 
And if you have any further questions, okay. feel free to call Mr. Fury. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's it. Okay, that's it. Anybody else have any uh, anything for the residents? I do have one comment to make. We had a resident uh, earlier came up about the comprehensive plan. Uh, there was a, a public comprehensive plan meeting on uh, June 24th at 6 o'clock right here in City Hall. Uh, it is, um, it's a committee of uh, residents, all residents that are on that committee, and that committee is open to anybody that would like to come, and I'm sure there's an audience participation portion in that meeting. So, contrary, there, there, are, there is public input that anybody that would like to come, and those meetings are advertised and they're public to anybody that would like to be here. So that's all I've got for that. Um, okay, we'll move on. From audience participation, we have uh, Council Communication and Committee Reports. Mrs. Stockwood. Hey, ARB met on June 17th at 6 o'clock. There were three items on the agenda. Case 210652 it was 1959 Summit Commerce Parkway uh, signage for Fujifilm um, it, by Fast Signs, and it was approved as submitted. Case 210653. 2681 Creekside Drive, uh, another, it was uh, Adeline Winnick signage for Brewsters, um, and that is gonna be done by B Next Design and Graphics. That was also approved as submitted. Uh, there was another case that was kind of a, a lengthy one. It was a case 210654, and it was at 8901 and 9799 Ravenna Road. Uh, it was a um, commercial alterations. The, there were a couple of, uh, couple of motion, the case was approved as submitted um, with a, um, uh, they made a motion with standing si seam roof uh, and that passed so that the um, homeowner or the owner of this property had some options uh, so he would not need to come back. So they had a couple of different, there's quite a bit of discussion on this and I'd like to talk more about the uh, so the ARB at our next meeting um, and maybe some of the rules for ARB and where that goes because they were, there was some confusion. Also, I want to make sure that there's a book of codes, I think, available. Shannon and I will probably give you a call on that so that at the meeting they have it, they can look through. Yeah, planning department has a book that they can bring to those meetings. Okay, um, now this was ARB. Um, so building and planning, place, they, so yeah, they, planning, share, they, they share the same book. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have right. them. So we just want to make sure that they've got a copy of that so they're able to reference that at the meeting. Uh, their next meeting will be, I believe, July 1st at 6 o'clock. I think they go every two weeks, even in the longer months. So I believe it's July 1st. Uh, there will be a comprehensive, like Mr. Scafidi mentioned, a comprehensive plan meeting Thursday, July 24th here at City Hall at six o'clock. Uh, there is a JEDI meeting on Monday, June 28th at six, the Justice and Police meeting. Uh, I did, there was another meeting, I missed the JEDI meeting last Tuesday. Um, I believe Mr. Bellin was there, so he will report on that. And let's see what else I've got going on here. I, that's all I have for tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fury. Well, thank you. I attended the Planning Commission meeting on June 21st. Uh, on the, uh, the regular meeting, there was a lot split at 8181 Darrow Road. This is the uh, property that's uh, behind CVS on Old Mill Road. Um, the, uh, the lot split was 36.6 acres and then breaking off eight acres to the side. Uh, the Planning Commission voted on it, on it and it was uh, unanimous with the four members present uh, for a uh, then there was a, a discussion on the consideration of medical marijuana facilities in the city of Twinsburg. And uh, there are three types of medical marijuana facilities that I learned at this meeting. One is cultivating, one is processing, and one is retail. Uh, recently, the city put a moratorium for six months on any uh, of these entities so that we could get a handle on the newly passed state laws regarding licensing and how these would be distributed and, and what the rules were. Um, Chuck Bonacci spoke uh, at length on uh, uh, his knowledge of this. It was very good, but a lot of good information. 
uh, several of the members have done uh, previous uh, research on this. Uh, the, the, the thought process is that uh, you know, a cultivating uh, center is not an outside or a greenhouse. It's really a closed building where people do hydroponic processing. Um, all three of these options have high security. Uh, the processing plant is where they take the, the, they, they take the cannabis uh, and process it into um, medical ointment, inhalers, or pills that somebody would have to get a medical marijuana card in, uh, the, in the state of Ohio. And lastly, uh, how we would, uh, how that retail would work. And it's, because of these retail areas are typically in, in industrial. So what the Planning Commission is doing is looking at our multiple industrial areas so that we can have language in there so that we don't just get somebody coming in saying they have a, uh, a uh, similar use uh, to so that we have some control. Um, some of the rules are that you have to be 500 ways feet away from a, a school and uh, daycare. Uh, again, we're, we're not, to the best of my knowledge, we're not working with somebody to, to install any of these. Uh, it depends on state licenses. But if we do not have rules and regulations in our uh, uh, code regulating where we would allow these, we, have, you know, we might have some challenges in the future. So they're, they're going to continue to do research on this, and their plan is to give us some information uh, towards the end of the summer. Uh, their next meeting is scheduled for August 16th. I attended the uh, Community Relations Board on Thursday, June 17th. Uh, community Relations Board is compromised of the Chamber of Commerce, Reminderville, Twinsburg, the township, the school system, the library, and now Penn State. Uh, the purpose is, and actually, uh, Gary Seracy and Sam Scafidi were the ones that put this together six, five or six years ago, was to start dialogue and get us to work better with the communities so that we know what's going along uh, with each other. Um, that's where the uh, broadband resolution came from. Um, we also uh, are in the beginning stages of working with the library on a storybook park grant that uh, uh, Jen is working on with uh, Laura Leonard. Uh, other than that was just updates on road projects. The next uh, meeting um, will be held on September 16th. Um, we're going to see if we can host that. Can you check that date, Shannon, so that I can get back to the group? They would like to meet on September 16th at five o'clock possible. Um, there, as Mr. Scafidi mentioned, there is a comprehensive plan review this Thursday at 6 p.m. This will be our fifth meeting. This is the third comprehensive plan uh, that I have participated in in the last 20 years in the city of Twinsburg. The current topic of this comprehensive plan is sustainability. Twinsburg today, there's not a lot of open area to build another Corbett's Farm or Ethan's Green. We, we are, to a certain extent, almost built out. Um, our industrial land, for the most part, is our industrial land. And, you know, so we have you know, some, some development downtown. For, what we're looking for the next 5, 10, 15 years are how do we maintain a high living standard in the city of Clinton. What do we need to do now that puts uh, in the future how we can ma maintain our economy, how we can maintain our uh, uh, environment, how we can maintain our standard of living and our, and our uh, amenities. So uh, that's the topics. Uh, the group is probably 20 people, consists of about 20 people. I mean, we have business owners, residents, uh, mixed to, uh, to give feedback. Again, as Mr. Scooby said, every meeting in the city of Twinsburg allows for public participation. It, 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 there's not an exception. Um, if there is, somebody made a mistake. And we had that the other day, and we added it to the meeting for the, uh, 
think it was the planning commission did not have public participation. And Mr. Bonacci was able to speak freely and carry on dialogue with the uh, with the members in his presentation. So, if you're interested in what's going on on the comprehensive plan, uh, it's available. And now we're going to talk about some things that will show you how to get more information on the comprehensive plan and other things uh, with um, Mark. So, again, we did we have reached out to our residents. We had 1,100 residents talk about what they liked about the city of Twinsburg and, and, and things that they'd like us to work on. The top thing was finances, and we work on that. We've done some things with uh, false information on Facebook the last few weeks. Again, things are posted about financial data on, so far the Twinsburg Roundtable is the only one that we've talked that, or we found it. Um, we are going to rebut that with what we have as far as uh, statements of fact in the city. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions. They're not entitled to their own facts. So what I'd like to talk about tonight, to start with at least, is uh, how to get information on our websites and all the things that we've done as a city to try to better communicate with our residents. So Mark's just pulled up mytwinsburg.com and that is absolutely the website that we want you to use, mytwinsburg.com. And he's gonna click on government because we have established a, a new department called the Communication Office. You click on the Communication Office. The, the purpose of this, and this Mayor Gates is, is instilled this and, and, and Mark is, is running it. Uh, Mark Katowski is, is uh, running this, this uh, demo at this point. The Communication Office works directly with the Mayor's Office to encourage two-way communication between the citizens and our residents. Effective communication means public access to timely, accurate, and helpful information about the city and its services. By providing easy, meaningful ways to engage with the city, we hope to strengthen the citizen relationship and feedback about city services and operations. And that's, that's really the, the goal of this whole program. Um, talks about city communication resources. Uh, we have websites, social media, video, email newsletters, email subscription lists, and various ways to communicate with the city. What Mark's going right now is, just let's click on city newsletter and emails. This allows you to subscribe to what you'd like to see. Put your name and address and click it down so I can read that. So we have monthly newsletter. We have information on the community theater. We have information on park and recs, uh, Rock Park, uh, and the senior activities. If you sign up for these, you can get them all, uh, or if not, if you just want one. Um, from there, we can go to our websites. The city currently has five. My city, mytwinsburg.com, we've shown in the, in, the, in the last month how you can access up to 12 years of financial information. All of the agendas and minutes. Minutes are put on after they're approved from the meeting to make sure that they're accurate and the board approves. But of all our committees, both the council committees and the resident committees that we run, like BCA, ARB, planning, environmental, uh, park and recs, they're all available here on mytwinsburg.com, and we've already shown you how to get that. We also have a website with Glen Eagles. Glen Eagles, uh, uh, our golf course is with Aaron and Moses. We have the Aaron and Moses information too. We do not run that restaurant operation any longer. We have outsourced that to uh, the people that run Burntwood Tavern, and it's going very well. Uh, our Twinsburg Fitness, if you want to find what the classes are at Twinsburg's Fitness Center, or about what the rules are and how to get a pull pass and all that, it's on that site. It, 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 everything that you would need to figure out with our fitness center and amenities, pools, is there. We have a website for the theater program. You know, because of COVID, they didn't do a play last year to the best of my knowledge. 
Uh, but we typically run one to two plays a year, and lots of kids participate and some adults participate. If you're interested in this, this is the website. Just save it to your favorites. And last, we have the Rock the Park website, where it gives the schedules, uh, locations, tells you who our sponsors are. If you have questions, you can contact us. You can buy tickets online if you'd like. So, you know, I think there's, the last I got an email, there's 350 tickets to the Kinks Highway, which is the Tom Petty Band, that's this Friday. Um, uh, as of maybe noon today is what I saw. So, uh, you know, it's a great time out there. We put a lot of work into that amphitheater. A lot of it's been donated by the sponsors. There's a VIP area. There's food. They, are, they, they have other road, uh, or, uh, open oven pizzas. They have a food truck. Um, it's, it's family friendly. Um, great brunch, big bug spray if you're wearing shorts. <laughs> but other than that, it's a fantastic time. So. And those are our websites. We talk about video communication. So I sit on another board, which is the uh, uh, used to be the Adelphia group, but it's uh, it's called uh, Community Focus. But we have a Peg Access channel, which is Cooper Public Educational Government Channel. That's located on Spectrum Cable on channels 1021 and 1022. And in Focus Community, this is Jeff Cole's group that he's no longer, he works part-time for them, but he's, he ran this for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And it started from like cooking shows and not a lot of content to where they, they have, every city has a, uh, a mayor's report. There are special events that they, they, they do a lot of local sports back when in the pandemic was, I think you could only watch some high school sports on, on videos online. Um, you can go to their, they have an app, which is the Focus app, which you can access all of this. Or you can just go to the uh, Community Focus website, as Mark has done now. These are all the shows that they produce. Mayor's reports, they've won awards. They, they do a great job. Um, that's funded primarily from the fees that are uh, the, the franchise fees of the multiple communities that have been combined together uh, from the Spectrum Cable uh, bills. So it doesn't cost the city of Twinsburg any money to participate and have them do work for us. Talk about the comprehensive plan. We've already approached them to do a, a, a movie or a, or a, a an overview of the comprehensive plan as they've done for other cities so that that can be shown to residents and available for people to see what, what we have there. So, um, we live stream council meetings on our, our YouTube channel. And once we are done with that, we have, the, we, we have the link to our YouTube channel so that they're able to be viewed later. So if you wanted to watch last month's council meeting, it's there. In addition, so those are the council meetings, so you see the video on that. But if you want to find out about any of our other meetings, we have audio files. Every meeting's taped. We have minutes from them. But there are also, there's, there are recordings of the dialogue. So if you want to find out what happened in the planning commission we regarding the medical more. marijuana discussion yes. last night, okay. it might Kevin. not be on there yet, yeah. because it just happened at 7 o'clock last night. But it's Here. available. If you, want, if you want to find out about Here. board zoning, yeah. finance yeah. committees, yeah. planning commission, public works, anything that we do as a public meeting is taped and located under our, our uh, uh, the streaming on uh, the so city's YouTube site. Uh, from about down the street, they're about a block away. Um. So then we're going to talk about our social media. So if you want to follow us on Facebook, 
We have the city of Twinsburg. We have the fire department, police, park and recs, golf course, fitness, block the park, and community data. If you are a Twitter person, we have the city, the fire department, park and recs, one eagles, and rock the park. And if you're an Instagram person, you can get the city of Twinsburg, the fire department, park and recs, one eagles, rock the park, and community data. So, I tell you the truth, I'm 60. I don't know if there are other social media forums that are available. Those are the only ones I'm aware of. So, but we have updates there. Our emergency of communication crisis. So, there was a flood warning uh, a couple weeks ago. I got a text, I got a voicemail from the mayor, and I got an email. If you sign up on our website for these notifications, you will get either or all a text, a voicemail, and an email. Again, you can go to your home phone, you can go to your cell phone. You just have to put the numbers in. If you, if you want emergency notifications, we had a water main break over on uh, Glenwood. There's still some cones around towards the end. I got, I got all three forms of uh, uh, notification from that. So this is really an important piece of communicating with our, with our residents in a timely manner. Mark, can you show, can you go back to where you can sign up to get the agendas for meetings sent to you? Is that in this, is that right there? Notify me. Let's, let's click on that and just look at that. So somebody said earlier today they weren't aware when we were having comprehensive plan meetings. So if we went down there for a planning commission, all those, all those meetings that we have agendas for are available. The minutes will be also available to be sent to you, but you can just click on which meetings you want notified to put, and as agendas are posted, they're sent to you. Public records requests. I'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, but, uh, uh, so if you wanted records, if you wanted financial information that you do not see or can't get from the, uh, the finance department's uh, documents that are all loaded, again, we have 12 years of financial document. Everything council gets is on the website for the available for 12 years. But say you wanted something and you, know, if you want payment records, you can, you can do that request online. You don't have to come in and see us. You just write your name and address, your contact information, and put a detailed uh, description of what you're looking for. Um, we provide information, we don't provide pass. So we will give you the data, but we don't put reports together. Um, Mark, is there anything I've missed? Um, you need help? Public meeting calendar, yep. So if you wanted to just see what's going on tonight in the city, it's right there. You can view all, pull it into a calendar format. Every blue box has a meeting on the smaller calendar down to the side. So, so, so we listened when people said they wanted more communication with the city and created a department that has a plethora of options for residents to get just about all the data I could imagine. If there's something that you think you need that's not there, tell us. We'll see if we can do it. So, um, number one issue in the city was finance. Uh, since the last meeting, I had the uh, close of the 5th of, of May. We, usually it takes about 10 days into the next month to get where we closed on the previous month. Um, statement of cash, my favorite document. It's <laughs> nice and simple, it's concise, it shows all the money that's coming in and, and, and how we're spending it. 
Um, our general fund started at the beginning of May at eleven million eight hundred thousand. We closed at twelve million uh, five hundred thirty-three thousand. So our general fund grew roughly seven hundred thousand dollars. Our cash on hand, as of the end of August, uh, in all our funds was twenty-eight million two hundred thirteen thousand um, dollars. So we're looking pretty good right now. These are numbers that have we have not collected a dime of the new property tax that we're voted in. We will not see that revenue coming into those locked funds, 0.3 for the fire, 0.3 for police, and the balance goes to the capital fund for safety courses till uh, next year. Um, there was, uh, our, our citizen auditor did post that, uh, uh, that he looked at our budget and, and uh, that we would have a $3.7 million deficit this year. And I will tell you that that is accurate on paper. And let me tell you why I would like the rest of the story. We spend that number, the $3.7 million deficit, that's based on the city spending every single dime that's budgeted in every single line item. We sometimes in, in, in the uh, employment or the, the, uh, the uh, sometimes for the employees we we need we hit that and sometimes we don't. But on average, over the last five years, the city spends roughly 92 to 95 percent of their budget, and just in round numbers. It's 29 million this year, so I can't do the math that fast. I didn't figure it out yet, but let's just call it Thursday. 30. If we're doing $30 million and did 95%, we would not have spent $1.5 million of that. The other part of that's the revenue. When, when Sarah puts this together, she's very conservative on, the, uh, on, our, on our income tax revenue, uh, as well as the other revenues that come in. So we used, for the purposes of our budget, what we closed at last year. So we used the COVID year's money, which is $22 million. Year to date, we're up about 9%. If we continue to be on a 9% run, 20, that's about $2 million more roughly that we would take in over last year. So I think we're gonna be pretty close to even. And again, we're, we have risen in uh, our general fund currently, and so in our cash on hand. So, if we spent everything we did and we didn't collect any more money than last year, we have a deficit. But we never spend everything we do under the budget, but we haven't in five years, and I don't think we, I didn't go back further. Um, and we're looking at an increase. Because okay? we, we typically underestimate the revenue, because we're looking for a worst case scenario, so that we're not saying, oh, we're gonna take in $27 million, so we have extra money to spend. We typically underestimate that. So, um, you know, so I think I think the citizen auditor had the numbers correct, but uh, uh, I think there's another side to that story. Okay. And lastly, I, I want to make you aware that the citizen auditor who lives in Sylvania, Ohio, has uh, filed a suit with us. Got this today. So we are being uh, asked to go to uh, court in Columbus uh, because of not providing all the public information that we that he believes that he needs. So I'm still not. Look, I, somebody told me he posted something that he wanted to debate me. He, he lives in Sylvania. It's a five and a half hour round trip. Go for it. Um, Mr. Senstock hasn't lived here since 2019. I can't find any record of him voting ever, according to the public records that are available in the uh, Summit <coughs> County Board of Elections. I can't find anything in the uh, uh, county fiscal office, which records all the property taxes that are collected, that he's ever paid property tax in the city of Twinsburg. It after being gone for two years, He's still publicly requesting information. And why he is taking us to court is that although he's received all the payroll information 
for all of our employees again. We did not do a couple things. We did not give the birth dates, social security numbers, or addresses of any minor children that worked for the city. So if you're 18 and under, we would not, we are being taken to, to a, a magistrate court because we would not provide the names, social security numbers, and addresses of the minors that work for the city that are part time. I don't know what the end game is to figure out if there are, if my, if my son worked for the city, he has never, I, I, I'm not aware that anybody else's people work for the city uh, for 147. And at this time, I'd like to make a motion that council uh, back the law director and the mayor in fighting this because I don't think this is right. And a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Can you call the roll, please? Mr. Carey? Yes. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Thank you very much. That's all I have this evening. Time to go home yet? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your report, Mr. Fury. Okay, next, um, I will give my report. The Finance Committee met, uh, we usually meet at the second meeting of the month. We met uh, last uh, two weeks ago. And so our next meeting, uh, Sarah, are we going to have a meeting on the 13th? No, we'll meet in August. In August, okay. Because the 13th will be our last meeting for the summer. We go on a recess. So we have one more meeting left. Um, but Public Works did meet tonight, our Public Works Committee, and uh, we had Amy Moore, our city engineer here, and she came and spoke to us about the uh, ADA transition plan, the American with Disabilities Act. And um, she's putting together a plan uh, that she's going to present, but she's looking at basically a 10-year ADA plan that we're gonna go through uh, in order to how we're gonna update the city to comply with the ADA rules. Although we've been, you know, as we go along, when projects come along, uh, we do, uh, we do, uh, we retrofit everything to be ADA compliant, such as our road programs. When they do a road program, you'll see on the corners, we take and we redo the uh, crosswalks with the little bumpy things. Those are called tran uh, truncated domes, and they put those in, and those are all for ADA uh, purposes. Or like here we did, we upgraded the back of the uh, city hall and uh, those are all ADA compliant, and the ramp in the back of the city hall is ADA compliant. So, you know, as we go along with projects, she's been very uh, cognizant of what we need to do to, to keep up with the ADA rules, and now she's gonna put together a plan for us. So we look forward to seeing that plan in the near future. Um, she also spoke about the uh, railroad crossing on Route 82, which uh, anybody that drives through that area knows that it was in terrible condition, and now it's been complete and it's open, and uh, I haven't driven past there yet, but I understand it's a, a delight to drive through now. So um, that's, uh, that's good news from, from that perspective. Um, currently, they're working on the uh, railroad in on Cannon Road, and that's another one that was a, a problem, railroad crossing. And um, although that was supposed to be done this Saturday, there's been some delay, I believe it was with pavement and approaches to the railroad. So we're looking at probably a delay on completion there till uh, maybe midweek next week before that's done. So she wanted me to make that announcement tonight so everybody's aware of that. Um, one thing back on the ADA, Amy said that if there's anybody that has any idea or sees anything in the city that we're missing with regards to ADA compliance, the Disability Act, please feel free to um, email her and um, give her your thoughts or give her your ideas and everything will be taken into consideration, everything will be checked to see if, we're, uh, if we are com uh, complying. Her email is a more, it's, so it's A-M-O-H-R at twinsburg.oh.us. So again, if you have any thoughts on uh, any ADA compliance, please uh, email Amy. Um, finally, under the public works, the water main, it was brought up, I think, under Mr. Fury's report um, on Glenwood. That, um, that water main break, of course, has been repaired. Um, typically, once Cleveland Water, because that's their jurisdiction, those are their, their lines, once they're complete, they send the city a notification saying that it's complete, and then they turn that, that break over to the city for final grading and final pavement repair. 
Um, to date, she's gotten, she's received no notification yet from Cleveland Water, um, which is probably okay because typically when that happens, you've got to let that road settle prior to go ahead and finalizing any pavement because there could be some undermining there with all the water that was coming out of there. You don't know what the rest of the street looked like or some of the areas surrounding it. So um, it's good to let that settle uh, the way it is and then go ahead and make the repair. So uh, to date, we haven't received any notification, but once we do, I'm sure they'll wait for the, uh, the right amount of time and then that'll be repaired and Glen will, will be opened again. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Council, our next meeting is July 13th, and that will be our last meeting for the summer. We will go on recess, and then Council will resume in, on August 24th, um, that, that Tuesday night. So we'll be, going, we'll be missing two meetings, which we typically do in the summer. Um, other than that, that's all I have, and I will move on to uh, our next report will be from Daisy Walker, Mrs. Walker. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I attended the public works meeting today at 6 p.m. And on June 12th, I attended the dedication for former Mayor Karabik, and that was at the park. And uh, I also attended the special committee for JEDI Community Outreach Reach Subcommittee agenda yesterday, so Mr. Bellin will probably report on that. I also have information from Jen Bevinson. Uh, she's over Parks and Rec report. And our first Rock the Park concert went great, a packed house. Everyone was excited to be out and about. We have our Tom Petty tribute band, Kings Highway, this Friday, June 25th, and we only have 100 tickets left. So between Mr. Fury's speech and mine, you know, we lost like 250 <laughs> tickets were sold already. So, yeah, <laughs> so that's great. We are still remaining a bit cautious in our capacity with 1,250 people instead of 1,600, and that may change as the season goes on. On July, our Cleveland Pops July 3rd show is sold out. The first Safety Town session are complete. A big thanks to Officer Biada and Fusella for running those. It was awesome to see the kids playing on the fire trucks and the school bus. Senior Center has been open with limited hours this month, and the seniors are enjoying getting back to their routines. Had a group of 50 attend an Indians game <clears throat> last week. Laura has been holding bingo and coffee on the patio, and our transportation program is really picking up. Summer Cap entered its third week this week, and all is going well. WP is winning, as Brandon Wood eloquently put it. We will be announcing the beginning on July 5th. Drop-ins will be allowed Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The fitness center is busy with Jumpstart Sports Camp, Calves Camp, and members are beginning to get back to a regular workout routine. Our visits are still on the rise and looking forward to continuing this trend until the fall. Beginning July 5th, 2021, we will be expanding our after hours access to full 24 seven. It was prior to March 15, 2020. The duathlon was on June 13th, had approximately 200 participants. This is always a fun event for our community. Because our department never sleeps, we are already beginning to work on our haunted egg hunt fall family festival, also known as the truck or treat and luminosity. Looking forward to seeing everyone out at our concert and the water park this year. Uh, Brandon Burns reduced the 2021 Outstanding Service Award from USA Swimming for his work on the COVID-19 layered risk mitigation program for safe return to practice and competition. He was also nominated for the National Adolph Kiefer Safety Award, but won't find out if he won until the National House of Delegates in late September. Miriam Fima, one of the lifeguards and swim lesson instructors for participating and placing in the Twinsburg Duathlon. That's all I have to report, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Uh, Mr. Bellin. 
Thank you. Good evening. Uh, on Saturday, June 12th, I attended the dedication for the memorial of former Mayor Karabek at Liberty Park. Uh, as Mrs. Walker alluded to, it was a beautiful morning. There was a wonderful turnout. Uh, Mayor Yates and members of the Karabek family spoke, um, and it, it really was a, a very fitting tribute to former Mayor Karabek. I attended this evening's Public Works Committee that Mr. Scafidi reported on. Uh, the full JEDI committee met on Monday, June the 14th. We had subcommittee reports on all three subcommittees. Um, that, that group continues to make really good progress towards our goals um, as we kind of develop, um, develop our goals and objectives, not only for the overall committee, but for the subcommittees as well. The next meeting of the full JEDI committee will be on July 12th at 6 p.m. And after that meeting, the JEDI committee will observe a summer recess until September. As Mrs. Walker alluded to, I attended last night's JEDI Community Outreach Subcommittee meeting. We discussed the goals and objectives of that subcommittee and began to formalize our plans, some marketing materials, and some community events. The next meeting of that subcommittee will be on September 20th uh, in, in observance of the summer recess. The Board of Zoning Appeals was scheduled to meet tomorrow on Wednesday, June 23rd. That has been canceled due to lack of agenda items. The next scheduled meeting of the BZA is Wednesday, July 28th, 28th at 6 p.m. Nothing further this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Um, just a quick announcement. There's a couple of uh, committees that were left open from the vacancy of Mrs. McFerrin. And so one of those is the Finance Committee, and I will be putting uh, Mrs. Uh, <coughs> Um, Walker. Mrs. Walker on that committee <laughs> uh, to replace uh, Joanne McFerrin. Uh, we have the Golf Advisory Board and the Volunteer Fireman Board. I'd like to leave those vacant for the next couple weeks. I'm assuming that we're going to make a for an appointment by then, and then we all um, see who would like to serve on those committees, and maybe we'll uh, maybe adjust a few around for our new council member when the time comes. So we'll leave those as is. Um, next is the mayor's report, and in his absence, we have none tonight, right, Mr. Maestro? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, department head reports. I see we got uh, Mr. Brown here. Do you have any report? Okay. How about Sarah Buchifas, Mrs. Buchifas? Good evening, Madam Chair. Um, the June 2021 income tax revenues, we are up 29%. We collected $2.1 million. Over last year, we were at $1.6 million. Uh, so year to date, we're at just over $12 million, which is up 6%. From last year, we were at 114 um, some of the difference in that is because of that deadline change that we talked about last time. Uh, last year, the taxes weren't due till July 15th. This year, they were due May 15th, so we do see the bump a little bit earlier, and that'll catch back up. Um, and then we did get a new estimate on our American Rescue Plan funding. Um, I sent you guys an email a little earlier today as soon as I got that. Uh, the initial estimates were between 3.5 and 3.7 million. Now that they've added the townships in, we're just under 2 million that we're looking to get. But I know that uh, some of the communities are coming together to ask the state to make up the difference. Um, so I'll keep you guys up to date on that. And that's all I have for tonight. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, we will move on to legislation. Uh, we move, we have Ordinance 44 2021. An ordinance approving the recodification, editing, and inclusion of certain ordinances and amendments to the charter as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances of Twinsburg, Ohio. Again, this is something that we do on, a, on an annual basis, um, the codifying cod recodification of our ordinances uh, for the city of Twinsburg. So at this time, uh, it stands on second reading. So I would like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 44-2021. May I have a second? I Se second. You. Mrs. Walker seconds. Okay, any discussion? Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Uh, ordinance 44 2021 passes 5 0. Next, we have Ordinance 45 2021. An ordinance amending Chapter 111 of the codified ordinances of the City of Twinsburg regarding council. Okay, and that's its first reading, so tonight it stands on it. That's its second reading tonight. Next, we have Ordinance 46, 2021. An ordinance adopting the tax budget of the City of Twinsburg, Ohio, for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2022, and submitting the same to the County Auditor. And that's also the second reading for Ordinance 46, 2021. Uh, finally, we have Resolution 49, 2021. A resolution opposing provisions of the Ohio Senate Ombudsman Budget Amendment, which would effectively prohibit new construction of publicly publicly owned broadband networks in Ohio 
and the ongoing provision of broadband services provided by publicly owned networks, thereby harming the ability for Ohio's residents and businesses to participate in the 21st century digital economy. Okay, we discussed this again at the caucus meeting, so I, at this time I'd like to uh, make a motion to adopt Resolution 49-2021. I'll second. Mr. Bell and second. Any discussion? I think the, the title of this is self-explanatory, but this will <coughs> stop the limitation of the city uh, and our surrounding communities from increasing our bandwidth and our broadband capability uh, and opposing the Senate bill. So I hope that we support this opposition. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Shannon, call the roll, please. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Okay, resolution 49 2021 passes 5 0. Next, we'll move on to unfinished new business and miscellaneous. Uh, Mr. Maestros, I'll start with you. Do you have anything tonight? Uh, nothing, thank you. Okay. Mrs. Stoffer? Nothing. Okay, uh, Mr. Bellin? Uh, the combined Meadowood and Corbett's Farm garage sale will be held on Friday, August 13th, and Saturday, August 14th. Uh, also, before our next meeting, uh, we will have the 4th of July, so I'd like to wish everybody a happy and especially safe Independence Day in their celebrations. Nothing further this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Walker. I, yes, I, I do have something to say, and I'll, I'll make this quickly. Uh, last year, um, we formed our JEDI Committee, Justice, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion. We did pass a resolution, and it was effective, I think it was, June of last year. Uh, we formed a committee, we interviewed our residents, uh, we council is on, the mayor, the law director is on this uh, board. We also have um, residents and we have a couple of police officers. So we, we tried to make this a, a diverse group of people coming from different entities and different parts of the city of Twinsburg. Well, an incident happened uh, recently, and we had our JEDI meeting yesterday. And prior to the JEDI meeting, one resident was talking to a current employee, a well-liked, well-educated, uh, someone that you could depend on at any time to give you the truth and correct answers to whatever personnel human relationship problem that we have not only within the city of Twinsburg but also in other parts and also within the, this building and as they were confer conversing you know there were loud shouts from one person and then he ended up calling a racial name to an African-American uh, department head here who's highly educated, highly respected and liked by the employees, council, full-time, part-time workers, and also in the city of Twinsburg. Now, the word he used was you know, and I want to get this correct, you know, being just an angry little boy, and I think that's what he called a person. Now, one thing, when you call an African-American man a little boy, that's worse than calling him the N-word. Trust me. They used this word during slavery. They belittled the black men uh, uh, talking to them beneath their worth and letting them know that you'll never be the man that I am. And so I think this was an offensive form, you know, and it was addressed to the slaves. And that little boy back in slavery time, that was a male that belonged to another person as an employee. And he was also suspected of being a criminal. So not only were they called a boy, they were called, you're a criminal, you're not worth to be called a man. 
You'll never be a man. No matter how old you get, you will still be a boy in my eyesight. Now, ultimately, this was a sign of disrespect, it, you know, and it was really offensive. We started this Jedi committee thinking that we could get everyone together on the same page. We knew it would take longer than one year, but we did not know or foresee that this word would be, as a matter of fact, the person was in here, and I'm not going to tell you who he was, he was in here earlier today. And it's totally unacceptable. It, that word is totally unacceptable, number one, in chamber con, in, in, the, in the contents, in chamber, anywhere within the city government. Uh, you know, but people tell you that words do matter and they have a meaning. There's a saying, it says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will not harm me. <coughs> They'll kill you. They, you could be called and trained to do so much because you don't feel that you're worthy, that you have no self-respect for your own self. And at a point in time, you began to believe all those derogatory words that a person tell you is the truth instead of a lie. Being on this Jedi committee, Mr. Bellin is on it, Ms. Maureen is on it, uh, Mr. Maestros, uh, Mr. Michael is on it, uh, I think Sarah, are you a part of it? I, uh, Shannon handles a, a lot of all our information. It's totally, totally accept, unacceptable, you know, but I just want people to understand that, you know, we need a culture of respect and that's so important. And that resolution says here that, you know, I, I can't find it. You know, I'm so <clears throat> nervous and I am really upset because of the person that he called the boy to. He's my friend, one of my close friends. and. When you do that, it just bothers me so that that words cannot express how I feel about it. So with us being on this Jedi committee, I welcome everyone, you could come, the public can come, to uphold us in the right, because we are doing the right thing, not only for people of color, but even if you don't know, even if you don't know how to handle a certain situation with me or or with Mrs. Williams or with, with Mr. Michael, if you don't know how to approach us. We're there to teach and train you. You know, we want the same respect as you get from us. But there are many times when we didn't get it. I went to Twinsburg School, started in kindergarten and by the time I was in, before I was in first grade, there was this white person told me that I was black. And we didn't use words like that in my house. And do you know how that made me feel at five and a half years old, going to kindergarten, playing with this girl, eating with her, and then all of a sudden, you know, whoops, there it is. The word comes out. My self-esteem was shot. I didn't, I always thought I was beautiful. I didn't like myself for that comment that she said. And people don't know that words do hurt. They hurt for a very, very long time. Sometimes you can never get over the words that are said to you because you hear it so frequently that you actually believe it. But I'm here to tell everyone 
you know who you are. You know how you want to be treated. You know how you want people to treat you. And let's start treating people like we did once we started this Jedi Committee meeting. We want to be treated like you want us to treat you, so treat me like you want me to treat you. Love each other. Be kind to each other. Don't hate on us. It's too much hate in the world right now. That's why we're in the position that we're in. We need to get to know our culture. I need to get to know your culture and what you do. It'll understand, I'll understand you better when you say, well, you know, I like this, I do that. But, you know, that's good. I'll know not what to say to you. I'll know how to approach you. But of all the things, respect us. Respect everybody. Everybody needs to be, number one, educated on these things. Because I'm sure we've said words, we've called people names, but we were young, we were foolish, we did things that everybody else was <laughs> saying. But now, and I'm going to quote from the Bible, when I was a child, Michael, you know the, know the scripture, I spoke as a child. But then it says, now that I have become a man, in other words, I'm grown, I know who I am. So treat me like I am now instead of that little person that you told me that I was black or that you said that you're just a little black boy. Sticks and stones will hurt my bones and so were the words, your unkind words. So treat me like you want to be treated and I don't know when our next Jedi meeting is. It's in July. The, the, next, next, full, the next full one is the, uh, the July 12th. 12th, 12th of July. 12th of July. Yes. And I encourage everyone to come out and read what I read. Feel what I feel. <clears throat> Be excited on what I want to happen at that meeting. Be a part of this meeting because we want Twinsburg to be a loving, diverse community. We're home of the twins. We're Twinsburg, Aaron and Moses, you know, biblical names. That should mean something to us. So I just want you to know that if you're praying, pray for us. Keep us in your thoughts and be kind. Be kind to me. I'll be kind to you whether or not you're not kind to me because that's just my personality. I don't like people to dislike me or hate me. I, it, that'll send me to the roof. That's why I try to be as kind as I could be. So with that being said, I love all of you. Some I don't know, some I've never seen before, but I just have that love for people that I don't know and the love that the people that I do know. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Uh, Mr. Drew, any final comments? Thank you. Thank you, Walker. Nothing is too insignificant. Okay, thank you. I just want to say that was very well said. So we appreciate yeah. we do appreciate your sentiments. I do have one reflection that I want to make, um, and that's uh, in this council chambers. Probably, I think it was last year, in the beginning of this year, we had food trucks that used to park down on Ravenna Road in the shopping center. And not that I don't like food trucks, I love food trucks. They, some of them produce some really good food, and I don't mind buying from them and eating out of them. Right, Chuck? They're, they're good. However, I didn't think that that was the proper place to have food trucks at a shopping plaza in a uh, residential neighborhood uh, on Ravenna Road in, in Masaras Plaza. So we passed some legislation saying that the, you know, there were certain criteria in order to have that there. And my argument at the time was that, you know, these food trucks are parked in a, in a shopping center that had empty storefronts right behind it. Well, why would these people invest in our community? Why would they rent a, an empty space here when in fact we allow them to just drive up and sell whatever they have and at the end of the day, put down the, the awning and hook it up and they're out of here. 
Okay. Well, so when we passed this le this uh, this legislation, then that prohibited that basically well it gave guidelines which they couldn't uh, they couldn't uh, adhere to. Well, the disappointment now I find out that one of those vendors for sure um, opened up a store. They went into a brick and mortar store, as far as I know, and what I read. And guess what? It's not in Twinsburg. It's in Streetsboro. Okay, so they didn't even invest in our community. That was my point. And now they're opening a second location. And guess what? It's not in Twinsburg. It's in Reminderville. Mm -hmm. God bless Reminderville and God bless Streetsboro. That's fine. My point is that by us allowing them to do that in our shopping plazas left our storefronts empty. And they, at the end of the day, they didn't invest in Twinsburg. They went elsewhere. So I'm, I'm glad that we did what we did, and I'm glad that they're no longer here. Um, I was all for at the time we had discussed making a certain area in the city that you know we could have a, a food truck area where they can all come in and, and park, and we put tables out there, and people could come and and just you know have a, have a great time there and, and choose to, to buy and eat whatever they'd like to. But that never came to fruition. Not yet, anyway. I don't know if we're still working on that, but you know, we would hope that it would have been uh, a city-owned property that maybe we could have collected a little bit of rent from it. Um, but anyway, so they're not here, and they went and they opened up a store in other communities, and that that again, that's that's my whole point. And I just wanted to make that observation that I saw, and uh, just kind of reassures that what I was thinking was I think was the right way to think, and I, I just glad of that, and I just wanted to make. And that's all I have tonight. Uh, Sarah, Future Press, Finance Director, anything else? Any I have nothing comments? further, thanks. Uh, Shannon? Nothing, thank you. Nothing else. Okay, hearing nothing else, I need to make a motion to excuse our absent member, uh, Mr. Scott Barr. Is there a second? Mr. Fury seconds. Uh, any discussion? Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Okay. Uh, and if there's nothing else, then uh, at this time we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you.